Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Hillsworth. It's six o'clock on Wednesday the 9th of October. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website as a Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. In the book, towards the beginning, in morning and evening prayer during ordinary time, evening prayer on Wednesday. Commemorating Robert Gross' test, uh, I'll be reading something from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints about him later on, just a commemoration, so probably no need to look it up, but you might want to just anyway, future reference, 9th of October, amongst the Saints' days and festivals, halfway through the book. If you're following online, everything will be provided for you electronically. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, by Zoom. The codes are on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on the latter, and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's descending verses from Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people, and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we now turn to the Psalter, Psalm 119, pointed psalmody for this evening. We're reading verses 1 to 9 to 152. Psalm 119 from verse 129. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book will open and close with the refrain provided. The opening of your word gives light. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The opening of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and draw in my breath, as I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Order my steps by your word, and let no wickedness have dominion over me. Redeem me from earthly oppressors, that I may keep your commandments. Show the light of your countenance upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes run down with streams of water, because the wicked do not keep your law. Righteous are you, O Lord, and true are your judgments. You have ordered your decrees in righteousness and in great faithfulness. My indignation destroys me, because my adversaries forget your word. Your word has been tried to the uttermost, and so your servant loves it. I am small and of no reputation, yet do I not forget your commandments. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Trouble and heaviness have taken hold upon me, yet my delight is in your commandments. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. 
You grant me understanding, and I shall live. I call with my whole heart. Answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. To you I call, O save me, and I shall keep your testimonies. Early in the morning I cry to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open before the night watches, that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give me life. They draw near that in malice persecute me, who are far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known of your testimonies, that you have founded them for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The opening of your word gives light. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the Blessed or turning back in our books to evening prayer on Wednesday. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. A reading from the memorial of Bishop Grace Test, addressed and delivered to Pope Innocent IV before the Papal Court at Lyon on the 13th of May 1250, concerning abuses affecting the life of the Church in England, from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints. What is the cause of this hopeless fall of the Church? Unquestionably, the diminution in the number of good shepherds of souls, the increase of wicked shepherds, and the circumscription of pastoral authority and power. Bad pastors are everywhere in the cause of un are everywhere the cause of unbelief, division, heresy, and vice. It is they who scatter the flock of Christ, who lay waste the vineyard of the Lord, and desecrate the earth. No wonder, for they preach not the gospel of Christ with that living word which comes forth from living zeal for the salvation of souls, and is confirmed by an example worthy of Christ. And what is the cause of this evil? I tremble to speak of it, and yet I dare not keep silence. The cause and source of it is the curia itself, not only because it fails to put a stop to these evils as it can and should, but still more because by its dispensations, provisions and collations it appoints evil shepherds, thinking only the income it yields for a person and for the sake of it, handing over many thousands of souls to eternal death. And all this comes from him who is the representative of Christ. He who say sacrifices the pastoral office as is a persecutor of Christ in his members, and since the doings of the curia are a lesson to the world, such a manner of appointment add to the cure of souls on its part teaches and encouraging those who exercise the rights of patrons to make pastoral appointments of a similar nature, as a return for services rendered to themselves, or to please those in power, and thus destroy the sheep of Christ. The cure of souls consists not only in dispensation of the sacraments, in singing of the hours and reading of the masses, but in the true teaching the word of life, in rebuking and correcting vice, and besides all this, in feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, housing the strangers, visiting the sick and prisoners, especially those who are the parish priest's own parishioners, by such deeds of charity, a priest will instruct his people in the holy exercises of daily life. The end of evils of which I speak is not the upbuilding, but the destruction of the church. I suppose it was ever thus. We appoint people who want to appoint, uh, especially if they uh, look after us and our interests. So to our Bible reading, second, first Bible reading, Second Chronicles 29 from verse 1 to verse 19. Uh, you'll find Second Chronicles about a quarter of the way into the Hebrew Scriptures. If you've got a Bible in front of you with both Testaments in it, about a quarter of the way in, you'll find Second Chronicles, First, Second Samuel, First, Second Kings, First, Second Chronicles, Book of Second Chronicles, and we're reading from verse 29, uh, chapter 29 rather, that's the large number in the margin, chapter 29, 
and uh, within chapter 29, the first 19 verses. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old. He reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, just as his ancestor David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east. He said to them, Listen to me, Levites, sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and carry out the filth from the holy place. For your ancestors have been unfaithful and have done what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the dwelling of the Lord and turned their backs. They also shut the doors of the vestibule and put out the lamps and have not offered incense or made burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of the Lord came upon Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of horror, of astonishment, and of hissing, as you see with your own eyes. Our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger may turn away from us. My sons, do not now be negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to be his ministers, and to make, and make offerings to him. Then the Levites arose, Mahath, son of Amasiah, and Joel, son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalalel, and of the Gershonites, jo Jer, son of Azimah, and Eden, son of Jer, and of the sons of Elisaphan, Shimri, and Joel, and the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, and of the sons of Heman, Joel, and Shimei, and of the sons of Jedathan, Shemaiah, and Uziel. They gathered their brothers, sanctified themselves, and went in as the king had commanded by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. The priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and they brought out all the unclean things that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took them and carried them out to the Wadi Kidron. They began to sanctify on the first day of the first man month, and on the eighth day of the month they came to the vestibule of the Lord. Then for, the eight, then for eight days they sanctified the house of the Lord, and on the sixteenth day of the first month they finished then they went inside to King Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings and all its utensils, and the table for the rose of bread and all its utensils. All the utensils that King Ahaz repudiated during his reign when he was faithless, we have made ready and sanctified. See, they are in front of the altar of the Lord. So King Hezekiah. Uh, elsewhere we read that Hezekiah asks the um, oppressing emperor, if he can go back to rebuild, I think it's Hezekiah that does that. And um, here we have within the history how Hezekiah directs the priestly caste to clear out the temple of all the um, misuse of all the idols and uh, to cleanse it, pray for it and uh, restore it so that it's ready for worshipping the true God. And it takes an age, but these priests step up and do it and uh, we might find in our own lives as the temple of the holy spirit we might have gone astray um, whilst we might be immediately restored and forgiven as we turn back to god just isn't any relationship in terms of work or at home uh, if our hearts are truly changed and we really do want to make amends and start again and uh, offer reparation the decision might be made there and then but still, it takes time to work through and do, and we need to be prepared and ready for that and recognise that, yes, at one level, um, we are forgiven, but the consequences of our actions uh, may well run deep, and it might take us a while to uh, regain, restore our spirituality, get back to that habit and find um, that our Christian faith becomes once again a, a support and a benefit and a blessing to us as we have to work through that clearing out as uh, the priest under Hezekiah had to uh, in restoring the temple. Scrolling on then to John 13, reading from verse 21. If you're following the Bible, John is the fourth of the Gospels. The Gospels open the last third of the Scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In the Gospel of John, we're looking for the large number in the margin, chapter number 13, and we're reading from verse 21 in chapter 13 of the Gospel of John. Verse 21, chapter 13, book of John. Scroll on to it if you're following electronically. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. 
One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, to the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Go do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this, why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had a common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. <clears throat> One of you will betray me, says Jesus. Is this him speaking from his anointed self? Is this him knowing as a human that that is how humanity is? And uh, interesting that um, Simon the Rock motions to the disciple Jesus loved which is a turn of phrase to allow us to place ourselves in that spot at the table to ask Jesus, who is it that would betray you? And we're told he dips the bread, gives it to Judas. Jesus then leaves after Jesus says, do what you have to do. And the people around the table didn't know what that meant. They assumed he was either buying something for the Passover celebrations or giving something to the poor. It's just so domesticated, so deeply grievous. It opens, Jesus was troubled in spirit. It ends, it was night, but it's a very domestic scene. He's surrounded by his friends, is he not? He's celebrating the Passover, is he not? The grace and mercy of God to God's people. And yet there is betrayal at the heart of the celebration of all that is good, true, just and right. And so... If that's Jesus' experience, perhaps we should not be overly surprised to experience grief and bereavement at home, at work, in church, as people jostle for power, as uh, people make appointments to feather their own nests, feather their own goals and objectives, that people who we think are friends, people who we think are with us, are actually going to prove to be part of our downfall. An interesting feature here, however, is that there is just this one person. But in other accounts, and if we read further of more of this chapter, we would realise that it's not just Judas. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. May God be merciful. So to the response back in evening prayer on Wednesday. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. To the song of Mary. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the grace of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and to scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. Source on essence, three and one, one in three. At the end of the day, we look back at those things that have been a blessing to us, where people have been kind, where people have helped us where people have been grateful for our conversation, our presence, uh, where we've made progress with jobs and tasks, our own satisfaction. We might have rested or been creative. We thank you for all those experiences that have um, inspired and enabled and uh, fulfilled, satisfied us as the people who've made us. We thank you for them. 
The day, however, might have been one where we need to call to mind those things that we need to confess, that we need to uh, have blessed and exercised, exorcised, and dealt with, removed from us, uh, disempowered, where we might have been caught up in addiction, submitted and not resisted. We might have been unkind to people with shortness of temper, or anger. People might have been unkind or violent towards us. We might have been overwhelmed by anxiety, climate breakdown. And what's going on in the Middle East, across Africa, Eastern Europe. So if that's us, we come to you at the end of the day for your healing, your provision, your protection, and your assistance that we might persevere. From Release International, we pray for protection, wisdom, and boldness for Christians reaching out to North Korean workers in other countries. Such interactions are dangerous both for believers and those they approach. We pray for um, the wisdom of serpents and the grace and peace is it, of uh, doves. Turn to Christian aid. We pray for Christian aid's work on gender justice in Ethiopia. Pray that that will pay dividends. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land. God of compassion and justice. We cry out to young people heading into combat, bearing the burden of what others have done and what they will be asked to do. For civilians in Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon and around, that they would be protected, that every life would count, be cherished and remembered. Joint public issue team prayer for Ukraine. We mourn every casualty of conflict and every precious life extinguished by war. In our diocese, we pray for our bishops Martin and Mike as they move to a new job and to retirement. Pray for our new bishop that they will be supportive of the parish system, cure of souls, and uh, which is the time to establish the foundation uh, and the soil in which fresh expression might be embedded and uh, governed. We pray that they might be successful in increasing the support and the resources available to parish ministry, lessen bureaucratic burdens. Pray for our forthcoming diocese and synod. The new people, the new approach, that it would be a blessing. Pray for Archdeacon Rich and me as Royal Dean. That he will inspire and enable us in our ministries as we support and promote our church wardens and the ministers for whom we have responsibility in our areas. We pray a blessing on Charles and Martin, who are lead clergy in the Woodbridge, St John and Bradfield parishes, and Gay, who is their reader. Pray for others with permission to officiate the House for Duty, uh, lay ministers, elders. We pray for their church wardens, treasurer and secretaries, also calling to the ministries in their uh, parochial church councils, community church councils, keeping those buildings up and running and promoted and in those places. We pray that we'll grow their faith and hope and numbers and understanding and influence. Pray for David, who is the chaplain to seafarers in Felix Day Port. May he be blessed and a blessing as he pursues your calling. Pray for Pascal, who is parish priest in Runazi, in parish in Biharamulo Diocese, and Esau, who is rural dean in Kabagunda Deanery, I presume, in Lueri Diocese. Pray for them and ask that they might be inspired as they see you working through them. We pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses in Halton, Weniston, Bramfield, Blyford and Thorrington of uh, Beckles Road, Southwold Road, The Street, Bungie Road, Blyford Lane, Sparrowhawk Road, Blackheath Road, Blythe Close, Back Lane, Oak Meadow Close, Church Lane, Colesview, Back Road, Coles Hill, Coleshcroft, Blyford Lane, Hammonds Walk. Church Farm Road, Bridge Street, The Hill, Pittman's Grove, Edwards Lane, Low Road, Houseworth Road, Walpole Road, Thornton Road, Weniston Road, Southall Road, Blyth Lane, Kings Lane, Priory Lane, The Street, Fox Lane, Low Road, Fairfields, The Wash, Brussels Green, Westerton Road, Willow March Lane, Devil's Lane. Pray for the people in those addresses whom life is going well. We thank you for that and we pray they might turn to you with thanksgiving, be supportive of the church and those amongst whom they live. When things are not going so well, we pray the church might in its turn be supportive and a place of refuge and security, uh, offering not just the building and what it represents, but also... Um, effective help and uh, contacts and charity to those who require it. 
pray for businesses based in or serving those addresses involved in hospitality and farming in particular, that they might continue to thrive and prosper by your grace. Pray for Jean, Veronica and Claire, John, David and Felicity, Francis, Molly, Anne, Brian, Val, Joan, Ginny, Paul, Carol, Vera, John, Cynthia, Kim, Jude and Rachel and others we may know for whom life is a challenge at the moment. We pray for breakthrough in sovereign grace, bringing healing, salvation and deliverance. <coughs> we thank you for all good and of Valerie, Jesse, Mary, Lee, Rosemary, Eric, Valerie, Beryl, Lynn, Peter, Brian, Audrey and Joan. Giving thanks for all that's good in their lives. We pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who say you faithfully here and all whose ears mind for us at this time, including Grace, uh, Grace Test. What's his jolly first name? Robert. Much more straightforward. And um, for those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those that have taken their own lives. We pray that we will, through your uh, promise to humanity, be granted with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we pray that we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the birth of your spirit. And that brings light in our darkness and order in our chaos as we mourn the loss of loved one or a change in life chances. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Ten ponyoro kumaliari hara ma fas patar mo yoko shara sa na hara sa ma kumiyanos ten ponyoro fi chara ma hara kariyas pa fara ma hara sa na kalari ten ponyoro kuri hari kashli fara ma sa yoko handa fas pa kalas shifra ma yoro ma yara kashli hari ma fara ma kumiyoro handa sa kali ba ha ma sa malo sofa ten yoro hari kashli hana yara ma fa na ma yoro sofa ma da kati hara sa hala i ha sa kana ma la ma yano fa ma ten ponyoro kuri hari sa fa ma da kati hara ti kari sa da ha sa ma na ba fara ma yoro sofa kuni yaras. You could hear me, Shorama Hapal Kutish, and that's where he had never had a wish as a Sanakala. You could hear the hand of his daughter, my first mother, Russian Salakanirash. Pebralo, your fresh lahani, and I was a marama, Yamahora Makufo, my Dalash. Behidi and him, the mother of the hundred of us, all that her house of Fatomio Sukuna, Ashley Kaha Azam. Pemarama de Rosha, and the river Hama for Hama Kotianash, Diri Asala. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.